Ladies and gentlemen of the 12th man, Aggies win today 38 to 10. It's got me wondering, maybe it's got a bunch of you wondering as well, what's life after Jimbo going to be like? you got a short-term perspective here, and you've got a long-term perspective here. So we're going to look at this from a lot of different angles. We'll start off with the coaching angle, going to the recruiting angle, and then we'll kind of take a little bit more a deeper dive into this uh, ACU game and kind of where we're going to go from here with LSU coming up, right? So first off, they win 38-10 to 10 against Abilene Christian. Just throw out a few things here because I think this game is indicative of kind of what we need to look through with the coaching hire. So we'll go through some of the names that are getting floated out there. Um, but I just want to start off by emphasizing a couple things. Look at the way the 12th man played today, okay? Uh, that kickoff return was something special. When you see a team come out like that, a unit, a group, that motivated, you're, you're, you're in for something special. Now, against Mississippi State last week, we saw that this team played a lot more physical. And we continue to see the struggles this week with the offensive line. Are those two things linked? Maybe, maybe not. It's tough to say just uh, you know after one week. But the fact remains that there's, there was a lot of motivation on that kickoff. And the 12th man will pack that stadium to, to watch people play like that. They're not packing that stadium to watch five stars play. They're packing the stadium to watch people play like that. 93,000 in attendance today. I'm sure it was actual bodies were lower than that. But still, the tickets that were available, 93,000. Okay? So the 12th man shows up just like they did last year. And it's very reminiscent of, reminiscent of the game against UMass. Although that was in the rain, you kind of see a similar type of game play out. So let's go ahead and float through the names as well that are out there for coach. You know, you've got Jeff Trailer uh, from UTSA, DeBoer from Washington, Ryan Day, uh, Lance Leopold. Uh, Leopold is a guy currently at Kansas, I believe. So can't say a whole lot about these right now, but I think I feel like I'm pretty comfortable with eliminating at least one. If you're going to eliminate one from that list out of anybody you know, who would you go with? For me, it's Ryan Day. You've been at Ohio State for how long? And you've done what there? I just feel like if, if that's where you're at and you haven't quite done it just yet, why would you come to A&M and do it, right? What are you going to do better recruiting-wise at, at Ohio State? And what position coaches are you going to have access better to that you didn't while you were there? So... That, to me, is just a clear and present danger. Going for that guy just seems like we'd probably be replacing a little bit, you know, same same story, different day kind of situation. So I, I don't know why I'd want to bring in Ryan Day for that. Now, DeBoer is attractive just because he's at Washington. They're 10-0. and um, And then you've got Kansas, who's on the on the come up as well. And Jeff Trailer, Jeff Trailer, a guy who's doing well at UTSA. The record doesn't look that great, but again, you're not going to get the 10-0 kind of record out of UTSA when you've got a team who's going to, you know, throw in a couple of uh, Power 5 teams throughout, right? So, uh, you know, would they be able to, you know, would you, you're only going to look at like teams that are 11-1, and you know, 10-2 and and coaches of that nature? No, I don't think so. Not from that, that G5 nature. Again, the surface level kind of take on who the coach ought to be to me is just really unpalatable right now. I really don't want to talk about, I need this guy that's over here winning because what I want, me, and I can, you know, I can point to, you know, five, five to 10 things probably, but I'll try and keep it simple for today. And I, I'm going to throw back though to the 12th man kickoff team, because that is a motivated team. I want a guy who's going to come in and who's going to motivate these players. I think the offensive line lacks that a lot of time. They came out last year committed to being very physical, and they played very physical. Today, there are a couple flashes of it. You still got a lot of communication errors. But the motivation to be better, I think, would just really pay so many dividends for this team. You know, behind the scenes, the prep work, the film work, everything that's going on there, um, the, to me, the, the ability is there. It's just not being harnessed, and that may be one of the main reasons. But, but from a motivational standpoint, somebody that gets the players who want to be better on a week in, week out, week in, week out basis, and who want, you know, to 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 rise above just the the 
you know, the surface level here I am to play as best as I can. No, that 12th man team was playing for, for the name on their chest, right? They're playing for the name on their chest. That was the, our coverage has been but all year long. And that was probably the best kickoff coverage we'd had all year long. You could tell by the time that they got to the 40 yard line, it was a different kickoff team. They were, I mean, they were hustling down the field. And we really, honestly, we have not been doing that. Sure, we don't have a strength and conditioning coach. It didn't take a strength and conditioning coach to get them down the field like that today. Why not? Right? Answering that kind of question, I think, is the key to figuring out who we need to take from this group of coaches. And getting somebody like that, I think, can just really flip the switch on this program. All the tools are there. All the tools are there. The mindset's not there. And Jimbo, for all the things he brought well to the, to, to the team, that fire had just been put out. It looked like that fire had been put out, and I think if you can find the guy that's got that fire, you'll find a motivator. Wants to come in and actually put some position coaches in place that will, you know, take care of the X's and the O's, coach the guys up. You know, you're you really got a nice a nice formula for some success there, in my opinion. So. In the short term, it's going to be extremely important, though, for what we're doing here in like the next two weeks. The, the transfer portal opens up in like, I don't know, two weeks. And so are we going to go grab some guys? Are guys going to leave? Who's going to solidify that? I think it was pretty key to keep E-Rob on. But that recruiting class has got to be a, um, a, a headliner right now for us. That's, that's paramount keeping these guys in, and we've already lost a couple of them. We lost uh, Draylon Miller. We lost Weston Davis. Uh, both pretty quality guys. Uh, Weston's an offensive lineman, and um, uh, Draylon, a wide receiver. Highly rated offensive uh, wide receiver as well. So keeping that class together, moving forward, um, if we could somehow keep this team inside the, the top 10, we'd, we'd really have probably worked some magic. That's got to be a huge focus. So whoever we're going to take, you know, uh, for the short term, we want that to be able to motivate recruits to come in. But first year transition from a coach, you don't expect too much from that, right? That's what life after Jimbo is going to look like. You're not going to expect too terribly much from your often, your recruiting class in the first year. So anything top 15 is probably, probably good. Top 10 would be phenomenal. But long term, we're going to definitely need somebody that rec can recruit. That was that was Jimbo's best feature, recruiting, recruiting and player relationships. If we can find somebody to replace that, it, it's it's highly highly desirable. A lot of this is give and take. It seems like every time you go through this, you're, you you go you go for somebody that's good with players and then you don't get somebody who's good with X's and O's or some some other difference. You, know, you get somebody who's good with X's and O's, but they just, they can't build relationships with students or they're, they're not doing it and they don't get, you know, the, the higher end to buy in. Maybe we've surpassed that institutionally and with NIL, we're going to be able to get the high end four and five stars on a regular basis despite the lack of relationships. So maybe for the long term, what we need to look at is somebody who is good with x's and o's but it's a it's it's a hard it's a you know hard to balance where to cut that line off right generally speaking overall speaking if nil is not quite a quite a thing i i think what you look for is somebody who does that well i i think a mac brown type is is a good start at at a projection for what some of this ought to look like um you know when you get somebody who is going to run your program and focus on motivating, focus on recruiting, let the other guys take care of the rest, another formula, I think, for success. And I think that's what we were trying to channel in the last, you know, what, year of Jimbo taking over the CEO role, but I don't think he was prepared to do that. And I think there was definitely some things going on behind the scenes still. But so moving on from all that, because that, that was, you know, Jimbo – I got a few guys we're going to need to make sure we focus on the top end of this class right now. Uh, Dominique McKinley, 
uh, Dalen Evans and Terry Bussey. So these are, these guys are going to be probably um, the solid core of the offensive. Uh, excuse me, the the recruiting class, right? So you got defensive lineman D Dominic McKinley, a highly rated guy. You got Dalen Evans, another defensive line, and that's where we've made our living in the past three four years is recruiting that defensive line. We thought we made a living on the offensive line. But that's going to be an area of focus for whoever's coming in. We've got a couple of guys, but we really need to make sure that that's, that's a focus. Cornerback, Terry Bussey. Keeping this five-star on, on, uh, on, the, on the list is going to be pretty big. He's got to be a priority. We have struggled with, with our cornerbacks. Um, although I think I saw a few flashes today. Harmon looked pretty good. And um, Rodgers came in, and I was quite impressed with the way he got his head around. Uh, something I haven't seen a lot from our DBs, but but Harmon's on the on the on the come up as well. He he's he's been getting better week to week. So I'm I'm cautiously optimistic about him. Also Kerr on the on, from the linebacking standpoint, looking looking pretty good. Um, but Terry Bussey would be a great addition to this team. Five star guy, somebody that can you know kind of come in and maybe play like what we thought a Smoke Bowie might play, or um, the guy we let go for um, you know LSU. That's now gone from them. We we need to replace that top end talent, and with somebody that's that's going to come in, you know, be a learner, be somebody that's got the fire as well, and you know, want to be locked down and 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 really just you know hone his craft, right? So that's what Terry Bussey can offer. Cam Cam Coleman, um, adding to the wide receiver core. Uh, this is some somebody we're going to want to focus on as well. We want to sell him that this offense can be. High end, like what we've been saying it has been, what we've been wanting it to be, because it's going to be tough. They've sputtered quite a bit this season. They're, you know, they still look like they're sputtering right now, but holding on to him would be huge. Okay, so again, life after Jimbo has got to be focused on that re that recruiting class. It's got to be focused on making his replacement and making his replacement in the right way. So there's my thoughts on that. If we can do any of that, anything top fifteen. And you, now you know where I stand with, with our coaching, uh, just you know, keeping it to two simple factors. I'm sure there's going to be a lot more, but right now, that's what it feels like this team needs the most. And that, to me, is what translates over the most to, to success long-term. We're not looking for a flash in the pan. We don't want somebody like a Sonny Dykes who is going to come in one, one year, have a, a, a lot of seniors on the team like TCU did, and then following year, just where's it at, right? So again, long-term, it's probably going to be best if we get back to our roots. You know, this, this ACU game was very interesting um, for me. A lot of the same issues still kind of popping up, but you can see the flashes from Jade Walker. You know, you can see it from Jalen Henderson too, who, who, who's a work in progress. But what we really going to need to, to work on here um, and and kind of focus on is playing like the 12th man. Playing like the 12th man. Open this thing up, y'all. I don't know if you felt the air in the room. If, if, you, if you're at the game today or if you're, you're on your social media, if you're talking to any Aggies around, if, if you were like me, it felt like the air just kind of opened up. I felt like I, you know, I didn't know it before, but it felt like I'd be, I was suffocating beforehand. And I don't feel like that anymore. I feel like, you know... Uh, a weight has been lifted. And maybe that was just kind of the, the Jimbo era. I, the, the pressers where I'm not getting straight facts. I've, I've said for a long time that for me, a, a key to when the end was near was going to be pressers and whether or not I was getting the truth in the pressers. I'm an armchair quarterback, but I can tell when I'm being fed BS. And when I'm seeing things on the field and they're not being addressed in the presser directly, that to me was a key sign, okay? So it looked like today we were definitely trying to work on some things and we had done, done some things better. E-Rob made quite a few nice little changes. That, that, that 12th man kickoff group was big. And, um, you know, getting moose on the field. Y'all, did you forget we had a moose on the team? I, you know, it had almost not um, resonated how much we've missed this guy. And he's been sitting on the bench the whole year. Now we've got a very deep wide receiving core. 
And Eastu, you know, he he was dressed out. He didn't play. Noah Thomas played. And to then do that, we had the tunnel screen that we worked in last week. You know, we kept it pretty vanilla this year. I mean, this week. And then we come back with uh, some tempo and some hurry up that we thought we were going to see all year. But no, we wait a little bit this year. We throw the touchdown to Jude, and it's like, hey, we got a one on one matchup down here. And, you know, we've got them in kind of this three man front. And now we're just going to keep lining it up and keep running it. We're not going to substitute so that they can and get in a, a defense that's going to, you know, be better. And then we're going to run it down their throat a bit. To me, and at least in that regard, it was much better managed. And it seemed like we emphasized our strengths much more than we had in the past. So, again, that's something I really love from this game, and I'm hoping to see more of it. Of course, against ACU, and we weren't going to probably open up the playbook, which was something I really felt like I hoped we were going to do. But, you know, thinking about playing LSU next week, it's not something you, you really want to do. Henderson, you know, Really like this guy. He's definitely got some room to grow and some things that he needs to get better in. So I want to take a minute to camp out on him and just that position in a minute. Because uh, if you watch the game, you've focused on, uh, from the announcer standpoint, how many QBs that Jimbo has been through. You know, like Eli Stowers, Calzada, King, Max, Connor. Um, I know there was, a, there was a Foster in there as well. I think James Foster. And, you know, these guys move on. And, we were most successful whenever we had a steady QB. And of course, it took a steady offensive line to keep a steady QB. But Kellen Mond, although not having the most ability and just the um, most potential that a quarterback had for what he brought to the table, it was all we needed to be able to do like a 9-1, a and one, you know, 8-4 and four plus a bowl win and, and do that easily you know, with the not most talented team, right? we got way more talent on the team than we did in 2019. And a steady quarterback was able to channel a lot of that um, lesser talent to be successful. And, you know, he, he, he wasn't, I wouldn't say he was the toughest guy, but he, he, again, he was just steady and he was consistent. He was smart though. He could, he could, he could run the offense. And when he wasn't making the mistakes that he had made early on in his, his career, you know, like the interceptions, uh, you know, say against Auburn uh, and some other things like that. The guy was really a pretty solid quarterback, you know, and that's one of the reasons why we kind of struggled with the, you know, eight and four early on because he, he, he did have those issues. But for all of his downfalls that he had, his strengths were such that it gave us a chance, you know, and right now it's just felt like we, we haven't had a chance even with the, upper echelon talent that we've had. And of course that stems again from the, the offensive line play. But that's definitely something that we've got, got to focus on. But I just want to point that out because if we can, we can focus our efforts in on getting consistent quarterback play, you know, we've, we've got an easy eight and four in the bag every year, every year, okay? So moving forward. Moving forward, getting back to our roots, right? Um, stop suffocating the team. You know, focus on that. You know, that twelfth man vibe. Let's find a QB that can just be continuously there, and let's develop them. Develop your players. Focus on the trenches. We have, we've, of course, we've got to start focusing on this offensive line. We've we've got to get these guys in tune. Um, that's then that's a short term goal right now. So whoever we bring in for coach. And uh, whatever we're going to do recruiting-wise, it's got to focus on addressing those issues and those needs. Do that, and we'll see what we, what, what we can do long-term. Um, the long-term outlook is, uh, again, it's got to be somebody that's going to be motivated. So ACU, um, I don't rush to make any snap judgments on this. I, I think we can definitely get a few things from this. Um, but. I'll hold off on a little bit more of an in-depth take, you know, for ana analyzing what we're going to have to do against LSU. For right now, if I'm if I'm thinking about this next week, we're going to go into Death Valley, and we're going to have an opportunity for eight and four. So it is going to end up being a worthwhile game. 
uh, or effort and, and meaningful situation. Do I want to be seven and five or do I want to be eight and four? Uh, we probably should see a much more motivated team out this next week. Um, and then from there, I want to see what Petrino can do. I want, to, I want to see what he'll really let his guys do with this next week of practice. It seems like we're probably going to keep rolling with Jalen Henderson, and I'm fine with that. Um, if we can put him in some positions that, that really work well for him and you know game plan and scheme LSU, we should end up having a chance. I think Petrino, vying for a position probably for a holdover, I don't think he's really looking at the, the head coach position, but this is his opportunity to shine. There's no more Jimbo there. Jimbo's out of the question. So whatever we're seeing this week and whatever we see next weekend in the bowl game, it's all Petrino. All Petrino. It's going to tell us everything we need to know, right? So he can really do himself a huge favor to convince me that we ought to continue on with him and that it wasn't Jimbo's issue. I think Jimbo, in large part, there was a lot of things going on behind the scenes that, that, that led to the, you know, there are maybe many straws that broke the cam camel's back from the, from the behind the scenes part. But everything that the fans see, you know, this, these surface level game type issues, I'd really like to be, really like to know that it, it wasn't Petrino's issue. And, and like to think that it was Jimbo's issue. And that's one of the reasons that we, we fired him. But if, if, if Petrino is not going to, you know, at least try to do some things significantly different. Now, he has already done some of that, I suppose. But, you know, still, Mississippi State, Jimbo was still there. Then I won't be as inclined to believe that he wasn't feeding into the problem. And that Jimbo was, you know, say, suffocating this whole thing and holding him back. I'd like... I'd really like to see that um, he's going to flex his offensive mind for the next week into the postseason and then for the bowl game. We'll see where we go from there. Um, but I expect a motivated team next week. I really do expect a motivated team. Anything less than that and um, a complete regime change may be in the works. Full on in the works. So that's, that's, a, that's another short-term looking I've got on, on the radar. Are we going to be full regime change, or are we going to have some holdovers? I really like the Terry Price holdover. I'd really like to see an E-Rob holdover. Um, and, and from there, I, I'm, I'm not real sure, except for probably an, an Adazio ejection and you know a cornerback's coach replacement and an addition of a strength and conditioning, not strength and conditioning, special teams coach. Other than those, I think everybody else can you know kind of do some convincing, but 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 most notably, I need to see it from Petrino. Petrino is the number one guy. I think I need to see it. Not a lot of people have been talking about him. It's time for him to take some of the focus. All eyes on him for the next what two weeks when it comes to the offense. Uh, I'm already I already know what the offensive line is going to do. We we've, we've already got them. So can can he make them better by his scheming and his coaching, his play calling? Let's see. All right. That's it for now, y'all. Again, Ags win 38 to 10. It's great getting a win. Celebrate it while you can. Have a little Kool-Aid on me.